Welcome to the AE Television Show. I'm your host, Jason Down, and we've got a great show for start for you guys today. Actually, we're going to be talking to some great people, and we're going to be taking you to a really cool place. And I got a review for you, so we got a lot to cover today. We got people to see, things to do, and places to go, and we're going to do it here as fast as we can. And hopefully, you'll be entertained and educated and inspired all in one shot. So, first of all, before we do anything, check out our website. It's www.theamemagazine.com. It's there for you anytime you want, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, 7 days a week. And what's great about it is it's free. Just go out there and see what we have going on. If you miss something, it's there. If you want to see what we have coming up, go check it out. We cover a lot of different things, and it's all there for you. And we have a really cool way of keeping in touch with us now. It's an app. So we're getting modern now, guys. So all you have to do is if you have an Android phone, go to our website, click the little Android app, that you, the little Android icon that you see. It'll take you to the page. You just download it. It's free. And it connects you to the AME experience. We are working on the Apple one right now. And hopefully we'll have that out here in just a little bit. So very excited about that. Also, if you're on Facebook, follow us on facebook.com forward slash the AME experience and Twitter at Dow Studios. And remember, keep in touch with us. Keep those conversations going because you never know who is going to benefit from them and we love to hear from you as well so first of all before we go anywhere we're going to take you to our first guest our guest today is Kennedy she is from Sweden she's an actor she's a singer and she is a model and she's here in the United States living her dream she's st right now we're going to be talking to her from her home in Hollywood California and we're going to be talking to her about her brand new album that she has coming out here in this fall so we're going to be finding out about her how she's how she got to what she's wanting to do. We're going to talk to her about her album. We're going to find out what makes her so passionate about what she loves to do. So let's go now to, to our Skype video with Kennedy, and we'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. We have Kennedy on the line, and she is a model and actor, and she's from Sweden, but she just recently crossed over into music, and we have her single coming up here called Move Me. So welcome to the show, Kennedy. Thank you so much. So this is a lot of fun. It looks like you got a gorgeous day out there, which is really nice. Uh, it's been raining over here. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's super hot, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you came over, you started off as an actor as an actor and a model. Which one came first? Was it modeling or acting? Well, I would say I started off with modeling when I was a kid, doing a lot of commercials and this kind of stuff, everything that my mom wanted me to do. <laughs> and... Um, then I got into theater, and I continued doing that for a while. Then I just did theater and acting for a long while, and then I started to do modeling again. And then I just did both equally, I would say. <laughs> so did you get to do a lot of, like, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, pageants and stuff like that? Did your, did your mom have you do a lot of those when you were growing up? We don't have, well, I guess we have a little bit of that in Sweden, but not much. It's not like a cultural thing we're doing. But a lot of my like commercials and because my mom used to work in PR. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's so, what happened. So tell me a little bit about the music over there. How different is the music in Sweden compared to what it is here? And did you have any type of uh, learning curve, you know, starting music when you were over here? I would say the music is pretty similar because everyone from Sweden is eventually coming to Los Angeles or to America. To continue with their music so it's pretty similar but the market is not as big in sweden as it is in america so it was convenient to to do it over here for sure so is that why you decided to come over here and, and pursue the music career um well i came actually for the acting first because i was studying at lee strasberg institute mm -hmm. uh, so i studied a lot of theater and film here and then uh, skylar found me and was like, Emma, are we going to do music? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and we started to work together. So it was pretty randomly I got into music, but I've been singing my whole life, um, but not professionally until now then. So you got to sing in, on stage and in, in movies and stuff like that, I'm sure. I did some musicals back home, but I haven't really seen in, in movies, actually. Just acting. Just acting. Just act. <laughs> yeah. But that kind of makes you a triple threat then, you know, when you really think about it. I mean, sometimes if people are looking for roles where you're able to sing in, and a lot of people can't sing, but they can act. So, I mean, this, this kind of gives you a little bit of a, a one-up on everybody. I guess. <laughs> I guess you have to do everything. 
I mean, it's a plus if you can do everything to to just stand out and get parts and get work. Right. Kind of to do everything. So how has it been? Has it has it been? Uh, are you still able to find uh, like um, acting jobs and stuff like that? Has it been plentiful for you, or are you just kind of you know stri- strictly sticking to your uh, music? Well, I actually just have time for the music right now. We're working hard and we're working a lot, so I don't really have time for anything else. I still do modeling. Uh, I do more modeling than acting right now. Mm-hmm. This is that's taking up less time. But I'm still still love doing acting. So if some gig come across, I would love to just do it. Well, you definitely love passion. You're definitely in the right spot for it for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see the Hollywood sign from here, but the Hollywood sign is right behind me. Really? Maybe it's behind the house. Yeah, live like in the middle of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about this uh, the CD that you're working on now. And you, like we said, we, we we're we're going to be uh, playing "Move Me" here in a little bit. What's your CD that you're working on all about? What's what's the feel about? What's the theme of it? I would say um, like a power woman, <laughs> empowering women. I would say it's it's very like dancey, super pop. A little edgy. Um, yeah, you think Madonna, think Lady Gaga, that kind of vibe. Like if you mix them two and then Kennedy. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Well, I've heard a lot of the songs and they're pretty impressive. I, I was really impressed with your, with your voice. Um, <clears throat> when you, Did you write any of these particular songs or are, these, are you collaborating with people that are writing songs for you? I'm collaborating, but I'm also co-writing as much as I can. What kind of experience so was, has that been for you? I will, it's great. I always enjoyed writing, and now I'm finally getting like a like a how to, to explain it. I finally getting sufficient on it <laughs> because that's the word I'm looking for. I've been like I've been writing for long, more poems and and uh, screen and screenwriting and stuff, but never really wrote songs, and now I'm kind of getting it. And it's it's great. I like it. I like it a lot. What's it? Be, what's been the hardest part for you? Has it been the actual words, or has it been the melody that that gives you the the biggest trouble when you're first learning? I would say it's hard to find because you kind of have an idea in your head what you want the song to be about and what kind of words you want to use. Mm-hmm. But so I would say the melody was the hardest for me to connect with the words that I wanted to say. Did you play instruments or anything like that to help you out, like, you know, musically? I used to play a little bit of piano, but I never really learned, like, chords and stuff. I just, like, learned songs. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just playing. But I just, I was just listening more and just, you know, got taught by the pros. So that's how I learned and got better. So when your second album comes out, you're gonna probably have a lot more experience with this. So is it, do you think it's gonna be easier next time when you when you come out and and write something else in the near future here? Let's see if it's cutting off. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Um, so now that you've now that you've been learning here, you, you're obviously growing your base, which is good. You gotta you gotta have that learning base. What um, do you think it's going to be easier writing the second album and more songs coming out? I mean, have you learned what have you learned from this to, to make a good song? Um, I would say I've been thinking about what I want to communicate with my songs, mm-hmm. and also I'm thinking I'm a kind of visualized person, so I like to visualize what I'm like, kind of the music video or what I'm seeing in the song before I actually get down to write it. And I found that technique during writing this album, writing this EP. So I'm think my next EP and no, my next album is gonna be much better because now I know the technique and know what's working for me. And what type of uh, what type of um, what type of things do you hope that people will be able to take away from your music when they when they're listening to it? I hope they can relate. To what the music is about, and I hope everyone to dance. That's the whole point. <laughs> want everyone to have a good time and just be able to dance with it and vibe with it. What type of what type of uh, what type of feedback have you received from any of the songs that you put out already? Um, 
I get dough <laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, no, but everyone is just like, wow, this is cool. You know, everyone is starting to dance and like vibe with it. So, so far, so good. People seem to like it. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to show the rest of the world. Has anybody come to you and said, wow, that song really touches me and tell you a story behind it or anything that, that it touches them? And if so, is that something you'd be able to share, like a quick little story of some of the th interactions you've had? Uh, I had, it was actually, we wrote a ballad the other day, me and a new songwriter. And this ballad is really from, from my heart. You know, it's very intimate and it's really, it's really me. And to write that song, we have to go to a really emotional place. So we just completely open up for each other. We just cried a little bit and then we got into writing and the song just came out amazing. And so I hope everyone else will feel that too. So how many more songs do you have to go before you're, you're going to have this album ready? I think I have two to go. Two more left. And we already wrote them, so we're just going to record them now. Now, are you signed, or are you kind of doing this like on the indie projects like uh, some people are doing nowadays? So I'm working with um, Skylar Lex, and we'll see, uh, I think Universal would distri distribute, or if they're going to sign. We're, we're not sure yet. We'll see. We'll take play by air. Are you currently doing any live gigs while you're, while you're writing this album, or are you pretty much just in, in the studio going to the grind and going to go out and tour once you have the thing done? Yeah, that's kind of what's happening. Right now I'm just in the studio, we're writing, we're getting everything together, and then I'm going to start live performing and go on tour and doing everything. You know, when I do when I do any type of artwork or anything that I, that I do creatively, I always want to get it right on the computer and share it with the world right away. And sometimes <laughs> I got to hold myself back because you know it's like you got to you got to build it up a little bit. You can't just like bam, there it goes. What? Oh have yeah. You, have you been doing the same thing? Has it been eating at you that you just want to get it out there and say oh, something? Oh yes. Like every time we come up with a new song and we're recording it and we mix it, I'm like, oh, can I just release it? Can I just give it out? It's like no, no. We have to hold on to it a little bit. Complete your EP. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> you know, because I'm getting so excited about the work, and I just want to show it to everybody. So it's hard to hold it, actually. It's really hard. You know, I know growing up in the 80s and 90s and stuff like that, some, one of the biggest things to come out of music was music videos. And MTV did a lot, you know, VH1 did a lot. But it seems like they're, they're still important, but they're not as looked upon as they used to. But I remember that we would always see the, the music video before the single would drop. And it would be like maybe three months before the single would drop to tease you a little bit. Are you going to be planning on any uh, type of music video or anything like that for any of these particular songs? And are you currently working on it? Mm hmm Yeah, we're going to drop... Uh, we're going to make a music video for the first single, which we haven't really decided which one it's going to be just yet. Uh, but I think we're going to drop the music video at the same time we're dropping the, the song. But I'm not really sure yet. Let's we'll see. I have to plan out with my team. <laughs> now, do you get any any bit of say in in what the video is going to look like, or is it, you going to just leave it up to somebody else and just show up and perform? No, I have a lot to say as well. You know, I love to be in the creative process, and we have an open discussion. Of, you know, they have like this is what we want, and I'm like this is what I want, and we try to combine it and and you know get the best out of it. So I have a big part of it, and, and I love that. I like I like the videos that seem to tell a little bit of a story behind them. I mean, everybody just gets out there now, and they're dancing in front of these big illuminated uh, backdrops and all these stages and stuff like that. But And those are really cool. But I like ones that tell a story. Are you going to plan on telling a story with yours? I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, especially for the ballad. I'm probably going to tell a story. Uh, and for Move Me, if you do a music video for that, I'm not, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with that just yet. Hmm. I'm just not sure. But I like telling stories. I mean, I'm an actress, so I'm all about stories. <laughs> awesome. So what's, what's the time frame that you're kind of looking at before the release will come, come about? Oh, I'm actually not sure. I think this summer already. Oh, so it's really coming up pretty quick then. Yeah, it's coming up for sure. Well, uh, we got about two minutes left, so is there anything that you want to tell your fans out there or promote uh, your websites or anything like that? 
Yeah, I mean, everybody can go follow me on Instagram because I'm, I'm updating my Insta story all the time from behind the scenes and from the studio. So it can be fun to stick around and see what I'm doing. So my Instagram name is Kennedy Official. So go follow me there and you see what I'm up to. Awesome. All right, Kennedy. Well, we're going to play your song here. I want to be able to get that in before the segment's done. So we're going to be listening to Move Me right now. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Go on there and tell her what you think about it because I know she's going to want to hear some feedback too. And thank you for being a great guest here. I had a great time with you. And hopefully you'll be able to see this uh, album out really soon. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Limo Bob builds, sells, and rents the world's finest, longest, and most exotic limousines in the world. We provide every imaginable vehicle from a four-passenger town car to a ten-passenger Bentley Rolls and a Hummer for 20. We even have a one-of-a-kind 727 jet limo. And we offer a complete consulting package where Limo Bob comes to your location and shares three decades of experience in three days with you. Call 708-945-LIMO and visit limobob.com. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we are going to be going to Kissimmee, Florida now for a very special thing. I'm going to be taking you to Animal Kingdom because they just opened up a brand new world of Pandora. This place is phenomenal. I had such a great time here. So I'm going to take you on a step-by-step -step walkthrough of my day. Uh, there were some places I wanted to take you in on a point of view ride, but we just couldn't do it because either they wouldn't allow photography or they would not it wouldn't come out right because it's just too dark. So um, you're going to see the whole day that we had planned uh, with you, and I'm going to give you a little experience about the brand new rides that we got to that we got to try out, which is the Flight of the Avatar and the Navi River. Um, I think you guys are going to really enjoy this. Now, the the Flight of the Avatar we were not able to do video of because it's a 3D event. So when you go on this ride, it's 3D. It would not show up very well in our particular video, but. The Navi River, we did give you a little taste. I didn't want to give you all of it. I didn't want to spoil the end for you. But we're going to give you little tips on how to enjoy your time there because it is extremely popular. And when we come back, I'm going to give you an ex I'm going to give you my review of both of these rides. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this adventure. Hey, everybody. We are in Kissimmee, Florida. I'm at the hotel, and we're about ready to go to the Animal Kingdom. Now, I'm going to be showing you everything that I do throughout the day, but we have a very special mission this time. We're going to go check out Avalor, which is the brand new ride that features the Avatar experience. We're going to go see the Avatar Flight of Passage and the Navi River Journey. Now these two rides have an incredible wait time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some fast passes so we can get in there and show you what the whole world and experience is about. But I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. If you plan on doing these, please see if they have uh, those fast passes for you. If they don't have fast passes, which maybe in a couple of months, get here early. And I mean when the park opens and run to that ride. Because right now, I just checked, it's already 150 minutes long for the Flight of Avatar. And the thing about it is, it hasn't even been open for an hour. So get there early, get there prepared, bring lots of water, and have a lot of fun. So we're going to show you what we're going to be doing throughout the day, and we're going to give you these experiences, so stay tuned.
just finished up. We're about ready to dock. Man, I gotta lose some, lose some weight because my cheeks were vibrating like crazy on that. That's so much fun. All right, we're on to our next, our next fast pass. Ugh. Hey guys, we are done with Expedition Everest, and now we're gonna go use our media passes thanks to Disney's uh, media department, and we're gonna go check out the uh, Avatar experience. So let's go have a little bit of fun. We're gonna see what this is all about, and I'm gonna take you on a first-hand experience. Let's go have some fun. Right, guys we're about ready to try Avatar's Flight of Passage. Let's go have some fun on this ride and uh, I'll take you on a first-hand experience. Welcome to the Avatar program. Soon, you're gonna have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi rite of passage, flying on the back of this powerful animal called an Ikron, or as we call it, a Banshee. The way you're gonna do this is by being matched to something called an Avatar. And I'm here to help you guys get ready. But first, we have to scan you for Pandoran microparasites. All right, everyone, stay on your number and move your arms a bit. Okay, start scan. You've all got them. <laughs> but don't worry, uh, they're very common around these parts. Uh, let's start the decon. Initiating GMR decon. Stand still over your number, you're not gonna feel a thing. You're doing great. Well done. They're all clear. Great. Now let's go over how all this works. Like I said before, you're going to be matched to these things called avatars, which look a lot like the Na'vi. They're created by blending human DNA and Na'vi DNA. Once we match you to an avatar, thanks to a special link chair, your mind will be able to control that avatar. 
Using avatars to fly this way was all figured out by my boss, Dr. Jackie Ogden. She leads her science team, which is part of the Pandora Conservation Initiative, and we're here in the Valley of Moara studying banshees and their environment. Over a generation ago, this enormous company called the RDA created a lot of damage to the area through their bad mining practices and conflicts with the Navi. Just like on Earth, it can take decades for ecosystems to recover. One way to understand what's going on with an ecosystem is to study what are called keystone species. These are animals like tigers, jaguars, seals. The banshee is one of these important animals. Dr. Ogden is the foremost expert on studying the Ikron and has spent years researching them. Unfortunately, banshees live high in rookeries and humans can't get anywhere near them without <laughs> becoming their lunch. But the Na'vi and avatars can. In fact, the Na'vi have been riding on the backs of banshees since their earliest history. Thanks to science, avatars can ride on banshees too. That's why you're linking to an avatar. It was Dr. Ogden who restarted the Avatar program. It's because of her that you're able to go through this rite of passage today. Pandora is a breathtaking natural world. I cannot wait for you guys to see it for yourselves. So, let's get ready for our next... Huh? Hmm. I'll be right back. Put the standby system on, quickly. Alright, you've all been matched with avatars. Uh, ooh, looks like they're ready for you in the next room. Uh, when the door opens, please go inside, all the way in, and stand over the same number that you're standing over now. And, uh, and I'll see you in there. Sorry guys, we had to leave you back there. They wouldn't allow me to take a camera in, but I could see why. It's a three-dimensional experience. And I'm gonna give you the entire breakdown of what we just saw, but you gotta listen to the radio show. Or maybe later in this episode, I might be able to give it to you. I don't know. It's just kinda, I'm gonna leave you with a cliffhanger. Anyways, we're gonna go right now to the Navi River, and we're gonna experience that. And I hope we're gonna have a lot of fun, and hopefully I'll be able to actually show you what's going on when we go through there. So here we go, guys. Let's go have some fun.
just got done with that ride and I didn't show you all of it. I want you to be a little bit, I want you to experience some of it yourself. But I am going to say now it's getting very hot. So we're gonna go to Cali Rapids and we're gonna get it soaked. It's gonna be so much fun. I, I cannot wait to be drenched. I usually always get drenched on this thing because I always go backwards. So I never know when it's gonna hit me. So let's go get, let's go get soaked for a little bit and that's gonna pretty much conclude our day. So enjoy. All right, guys, we are just about ready to experience Dinosaur. And we just got done with uh, the Cali Rapids, and it was ex a wonderful experience. I didn't get as wet as I wanted to. But now we're gonna try this out, and then we're gonna take out one more fast pass, and we're gonna go to a African Safari to give you an African experience. And then that will pretty much wrap up the day. So I hope you enjoyed our, your time with us, and we'll be back in a little bit. Well guys, I wanted to take you on an adventure through the dinosaur, but it was just way too dark. Um, I would not have been able to give you exactly what the experience was, but it was pretty cool. It's a very rough ride. Dinosaurs in your face. I think you guys would enjoy it if you get, if you get a chance to come. And it's at Dinoland USA. guys we are on I-4 going back to Tampa I'm exhausted and I'll tell you what today was one hot day 92 to 92 degrees it said outside but it felt like 98 to 99 and the humidity was unbelievable so if you come during the summertime bring a lot of water bring something to keep yourself hydrated and sunscreen it is it's hot out here but before we go I'm gonna give you a little uh, insight into Pandora what, what you didn't get to see that the fantasy of flight Basically what we were doing was you get in here, you sit down like on a motorcycle looking thing, and then you have it completely embrace you from the back, the front, everywhere, even, even your legs. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna simulate what, what they call a banshee. So you can feel it breathing, you can feel the, the wings flap, and then you go on probably one of the most amazing journeys I've ever seen in my life. If you've ever been on soaring, this puts soaring to shame. It's 90 degrees you go down straight down you feel like you're flying it is an amazing experience if you get a chance to do this you must go see this uh the, the uh, avatar fantasy of flight most amazing thing i've seen in a long time and it's definitely worth the wait but get there early i tell you by the time we were done with that ride it was 195 minutes long that's almost that's almost four hours so get there early and run to that ride definitely worth the wait and another thing, I know we went on the safari. I know there's not a lot of, uh, not there wasn't a lot of footage, and that's because we ran out of video space. But that's okay. You get an idea of what it's all about. Absolutely worth the, the trip too. So next time you're down here at um, Disney's Animal Kingdom, go check it out. And until then, guys, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break, and we'll be back after this. In a world where all opinions matter, one opinion matters more, and that's his. Join Jason Dowd as he reviews movies, books, music, and anything someone wants his opinion on in this edition of Man Reviews Stuff. Now here is Jason Dowd. Welcome back everybody. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed our time at Pandora. I hope you liked Animal Kingdom and I hope you'll be able to go ch experience it yourself. Now, as far as the Flight of the Avatar, I gotta say, this is probably one of the most intense rides I've ever been on. It didn't need to have any, like, roller coaster rides and dips and, and, and pressure behind you or anything like that. It was just the most amazing, breathtaking experience I've ever had. Now, it's very similar to Epcot's Soaring. The only difference is it's actually on the back of an Avatar. Uh, you are the avatar on the back of a banshee 
and you fly through Pandora. And what's really cool is when you get inside this, this ride, you sit on what looks like a motorcycle. And they strap you in. They have like these little pads that come around your chest, around your back, and on your legs. Now, if you are claustrophobic, this might freak you out a little bit because you cannot really move. But by doing so, you're going to have an experience of your lifetime. You put on 3D glasses, and these are not your typical 3D types of experiences where you can kind of see that it's 3D and it kind of messes up with your eyes a little bit. To me, it looked just like I was looking out as we are right now. And um, you go on, th on 90 degree drops, you fly around, and you actually feel like the banshee below you is actually breathing. You can feel the wind uh, uh, from, its, from its wings and stuff like that. It's the most amazing thing I've ever experienced. You get to fight another banshee. You get to go into the, into the uh, Navi River. And then, when you're done, you're going to have your breath taken away. Honestly, this is far better than soaring ever was. And um, I love soaring. It's still one of my favorite things to experience. But i got to say, this: there's very, very long wait lines. Um, I think as much as 145 to 200 minutes you can wait there. And if you really think about that, you're looking at almost four hours. So get there early. It's very hot, especially during the summertime and now in the August time. So bring something to drink. Find a ways to stay cool, but get there early because the earlier you get there, the less of the line you're going to have to wait through. There are supposedly um, fast passes. I haven't seen any yet. I've been trying to get them to go back. So if I ever find them, I'm going to jump on those uh, right away. And if you get a chance, please go check out for fast passes. You might get lucky. Also, the Navi River is one of the coolest rides I've seen too because you get to see it a little bit in the flight of the avatar but now you get to experience it firsthand it is a bioluminescent ride kind of similar to a small world just that you're going through this river with um, amazing animals foliage and so much more it's not a fast ride but it's a very relaxing cool and yet eye stimulating ride I think you got you know honestly Disney has outdone themselves with this with this entire experience and then when you get to go outside you get to see this mountain that floats in the air and a waterfall comes off of it you have oversized plants you have plants that you can play like a drum it is it is definitely worth the wait and it's worth the time but I cannot stress enough get there early now the Navi River isn't as long as the flight of the Avatar but you can still wait about 90 to 120 minutes, so be prepared to wait. Anyways, that's my review of this. I hope you guys will get a chance to go see it soon. It's definitely worth it. But we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be closing out the show and see, tell you what we have coming up. If any other industry tried to do something like this, they'd go to jail. Stuart Venner helps people out of timeshares. He warns we're pawns. Yes, we are. Venner says timeshares lose so much value, they're nearly worthless when buyers opt to sell. If you can get anything, it's really a miracle. When there aren't any nibbles, Venner's tried giving deeds back to developers, but he says they refuse. They're telling people it's worth fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars and I offer it to them for nothing and they don't want it back. Finance guru Dave Ramsey goes farther, labeling timeshares one of the biggest scams to Are you stuck with a timeshare? Did you attend the presentation and were seduced and enticed into buying that great vacation and investment? Now you're in the terrible position of trying to figure out a way to get out of that mess. You're not alone. For over 15 years, BuyYourTimeshare.com has been helping people like yourself get out of timeshare ownership. The fact is there is no resale market. Unscrupulous telemarketers call you and say they have buyers waiting and the next thing that happens is you give them hundreds of dollars for an ad and you'll never hear from them again. Another fact is that an identical timeshare to yours is being offered on eBay for a dollar, and no one is buying it. If you want out of your timeshare, I urge you to go to buyyourtimeshare.com or call them at 877-94-HELP-ME. That number again is 877-94-HELP-ME. Buyyourtimeshare.com. That's buyyourtimeshare.com. 877-94-HELP-ME. 877-94-HELP-ME. All right, guys, we are back. We are closing out the show. I had a great time with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed everything. And, um, you know, there's so many things to do in this world. So get out there and explore. Don't be afraid. Just get out there and have fun. And you never know what you're going to learn along the way. And if you are trying to get into some type of artwork or anything that you want to do, don't hesitate to do it. Don't forget to speak up. And I'll tell you why. You know, when I was younger, one of my biggest 
things that I wanted to do. Well, actually, there's two things. And one of it was to be a Mouseketeer. The second of it was to be slimed at the you can't do that on television. Well, what I found out later in life was that it was taped right in Orlando. I was maybe an hour and a half away. And unfortunately, I never said anything to my parents, and I let my shyness control me. And because of that, I missed out on a great opportunity. So those are my regrets, and regrets are actually a form of failure. It's the only failure that you can actually have that is very hard to go away. I'm too old now to be a Mouseketeer, and they don't slime anymore at, at the Nick Studios. So unfortunately, those are, those are something I just won't be able to ever experience. Don't let that happen to you guys. All right, so that's all we have. I hope you guys will be able to come back. We have more guests coming out next week. Uh, we're going to have two guests, actually. I think you guys are going to really enjoy them. And uh, we got we got more coming up because, remember, it's getting into the holiday season, so now we're going to be doing starting our Halloween stuff, and we're going to be starting our Christmas stuff. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So keep those creative juices flowing, guys. We will see you next time, and keep keep on trucking. Like, OMG, you were on TV and junk.